uh, the Lord is good all the time. Now we want to thank the Lord so much for accepting that these holy hours of the Sabbath we will be here today. Uh, the sanctuary of the Lord looks like the temperature is increasing and uh, I see a lot of us not feeling very comfortable this afternoon, but we still thank the Lord. Uh, you see, many of us who are staying this side of uh, the continent, that is the beauty of belonging to Africa. In other parts of the world, they even want to see a bit of it but they are never seeing it. Uh, we thank God for the entire church family of a new life, and uh, more particularly the children ministries department. I'm very encouraged. I know very well that these children ministry uh, teachers are doing a great job on behalf of our families. And you remember in the course of the week we talked about sin of crime. And the Bible was telling us, or told us, that if you do not have time for your wife, you just know that, that naturally you don't have time for your wife. Do not get married. And if you know you will not have time for children, never dare ask for one. And we discovered many of us are producing criminals right in their bedrooms. And the world is full. We never need them now. God said those who love the Lord and are very careful about themselves will never be ashamed. They will give birth to children who will glorify the name of the Lord. And so we thank you, uh, Children Ministry, department, my wife belongs there. I, I am also a very strong children ministry uh, director as much as I am a pastor. So we love children. Uh, that is the backbone of this church and the backbone of our family. If you can make your kitchen more expensive, because kitchen is the most expensive room in our homes, then you must not forget also to make life very good for your children, even as you nurture them for the kingdom of God. And so children ministry teachers, may the Lord bless you uh, for even challenging us. Some of these stories you talk about, the age of Noah and the, all that, those ones adults like us don't think about. Those are small things. As we think of how we can be happy with our wives and producing children. And uh, those small stories you know better. And we thank God for you and may the Lord bless you even as you take uh, care of the young angels. We call them the jewels of the Lord. The vocals of praise and the Bereans, we thank you. We have been missing you for accepting to be part of this meeting that the Lord himself designed for us. The family ministries department led by uh, the pastors in charge and the senior elders, Elder Uchako was telling me that uh, in the Adventist setup, we don't have senior pastors and senior elders. Uh, they are only elders. But some of us have grown so well in the church that you are tempted to call them senior. Uh, so we thank you, the, children, uh, the family ministries department, the department for the young couples, the department for those who are tired of living, the department of uh, widows and single parents. Uh, we thank God for every one of you for the good work. You took good care of uh, the programs and also good care of the pastor. You are very busy, Elder Mika and the team, very busy 
coordinating how the pastor will be very comfortable while he is within the city. And the Lord bless you, Sister Betty, forever keeping touch with the office of the, uh, the pastors. Uh, Ella Zachary, you can now wave because you forgot to introduce yourself. Uh, uh, thank you very much. God bless you. Yeah, we are praying for you right away. The mother is seriously sick and she has been rushed to the hospital as we speak now. So we uh, remember and lift the family of uh, Ella Zachary, uh, Mama Paris Ochako, even as we whisper, the prayer ministry team, you can whisper the name of uh, Sister Paris Ochako unto the Lord. She has been rushed to the hospital. And we are praying for them. There's another prayer request we have to put forward, even as we mention these ones. The prayer for uh, Phil. Those who are following online, you see that name, Phil Chavez. This must be a French name. So I don't know whether it is pronounced right, but that is the name. This is a child of God who is requesting the church that even as we pray today, we remember to pray for this prayer item. The servant of the Lord is saying, I want to get married as soon as the pastor is preaching today. I have been waiting for over 28 years and praying, but these prayers have not been answered. And so he's putting it as a great prayer request, even as we end this week of marriage and family, that the Lord will provide. Some of us may take this one for granted, but I have seen the Lord answer prayers online. One day I saw a church member of mine went to the Standard Nation uh, group and wrote a small biography and said, I am praying that the Lord will give me a willing husband, one who loves the Lord. And the papers went out and people read, and in the evening, seven prospective candidates <laughs> applied through that. I told you in the course of the week that when you do not have the gift of singleness, take this opportunity, this one. Apply very fast and tell us when you want us to begin organizing a small committee that will work on this program. And Paul said it very well, that many of us are seated in the church and they know very well they do not have the gift of being single. But they want to remain single. So what is shocking the Bible is how they continuously give birth to children without husbands. So I'm praying for you brothers and sisters. There are chances here online. Take good note of this one. Even as the Lord is blessing you. Amen? Amen. Pastor Lo, may the Lord bless you. Uh, Pastor Emmanuel, may the Lord bless you. Pastor Kali, may the Lord bless you for the invitation. Brother Edward, this is God himself. I want to welcome all of us this afternoon, even as we go into the sermon, that the Lord will speak to our hearts this afternoon. We also want to welcome the Hope Channel viewers. This program is live. Hope Channel is here with us. Uh, we welcome you and feel part of us, even as the Lord is speaking to us as we come to the closure of this program. Now, after this special someone that the Lord is giving these holy hours of the Sabbath, I will pray for a recommitment of our relationship with each other and with God. 
so that if you are here and you see that you need to recommit yourself to each other and unto the Lord, that will I do after this one. And if you feel there's anything in your family that you want to share with God through prayers, as I come to the close of this sermon, uh, brothers and sisters, don't tarry. Uh, present it before the Lord. Just as uh, Pastor Emmanuel has told you, I'm pastor that from the, the Nyanza region, Lake Victoria Field. Now Lake Victoria Field is growing very fast and is one of the youngest fields we have soon turning into a conference. And we thank God for the support from New Life Church. I know in the month of March on 11th, the New Life Church members, together with our friends from here, will form part of the great mega fund drive that will take place in Lake Victoria, even as we contemplate on building offices for the servant of the Lord and the work of the Lord. So may the Lord bless you even as you think about this, even as things keep working. I know Ella Pere Nyaroya will be doing all this together with the family even as you coordinate our brothers and sisters from this place. So Ella Opere Nyaroya comes from that conference. Ella, can you now wave on my behalf? Yeah, you can wave back. You don't feel bad when a member is greeting. Yeah, you just wave back. Some of you are very genius. They say, oh, why is pastor not mentioning my name? You are very many. I cannot mention all of you. But one way or the other, the pastor loves you. How I, I want to let you know that I missed you in the course of the week. You ought to have been coming this way. You see, someone was telling me, you are watching online. I also agree. But with the era where money is, a, in, is an issue, an era where people borrow money from people they do not know, in the name of Fuliza and Okoa Jazi, you cannot trust the online programs. Because they go for one hour and your credit is a loan of 250. So how will you make the risk of uh, subscribing when you have other assignments to do with, with airtime? And you know when there's nothing keeping you at home, always plan to come to the church of God. I was reading some scriptures some days back that when you fail to attend church in any particular day, the route that you usually use for church keeps calling your name and shouting. And I don't know how that happens. So let's always find it possible that we come to the house of the Lord when time will allow us. Now, turn to your Bibles, the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 28, verse 1 through verse 7. That is where we will take our sermon today. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and other Mary came to the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Verse 5. But the angel of the Lord answered and said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for his reason, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. 
Our topic this afternoon is entitled, He Still Moves Stones. He Still Moves Stones. Shall we pray? Our Father and God in heaven, a time has come that you have to speak to us. And as you can see from heaven, sinners of all grades are seated here. They want to hear the word that will give them hope. Heavenly Father, I am just a vessel that cannot produce anything good for these members, the families that are seated here before you today. So you can minister on my behalf because all of us must listen even as you speak. Here I rest my case even as you speak to the church. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 28 begins to give us a story that most of us must have known. Because these are stories that you ask the children ministry department, they will cram them and tell you exactly what the story is all about. But I want to pick something from this verse that we are going to share today. And the words, you, as you can see them, I will pick what is in verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Now, when you see the background of this verse and how the, 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 the author of this verse is bringing it so that we understand it, the Bible begins by saying, it is early dawn of the Sunday morning. It was very early in the morning, yet it was still very dark in the eyes of these family members who have been following Jesus Christ all the ways of their lives together with their family members. They have been following the Son of God and they knew very well that Jesus is the only hope that they needed even at this time of their lives. They have been following him because they knew that Jesus was the only hope that they needed for themselves. But throughout the week, you discovered that the only thing we need for our families is not much that we go for. And Philip requested Jesus and said to him, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. These women knew very well what was enough for their families. And so they were following Jesus. But at this particular time, the Bible is saying it was a dark, dark, dark Friday even though they were calling it the Good Friday. There was nothing good at all for this bunch of women who have been following Jesus. The only hope they had in this life. And the Bible confirms that it was dark for Jesus because of the Peter's denial. It was dark for Jesus because the disciples had left him alone. It was dark for Jesus because of Pilate ruling. It was very dark for Jesus because no one was standing there with him. And the Bible says that it was only a bunch of women who could be seen standing at a distance from the cross and they were watching. All the disciples had taken off, but these women stayed on. They had sought the sight of Jesus and they had been following Jesus all the ways of their life. And the Bible is not telling us more about these women. But when you read in, in your Bible, the book of Luke will tell you that these women were also followers of Jesus Christ. They have brought all their means together to support the work and the ministry of Jesus Christ that his ministry will go forward. And so these women were ever concerned about the things of God. But as Matthew is putting it, this time these women are no longer the same women who are happy preaching and walking and giving out their means for the kingdom of God. As they were walking through the night, the Bible is saying that their Sabbath was interfered with. It was not a happy Sabbath as before because the one they trusted more, the one who gave them hope, is now lying down there in the tomb. 
And the Bible is saying that among the two were Mary, the mother of James and John, and Mary uh, Magdalene. You, you remember the stories of these women very well. And so early in the morning, even though it was darkness, they were walking towards the grave. They had an issue to solve with Jesus. And the Bible is saying that as they were walking towards the grave of Jesus, they had prepared perfume to go and prepare his body for burial. But my Bible is saying here that Mary and the other women are now coming to bid Jesus farewell. They are coming to bid farewell to the one they loved, the one who gave reason for their hope. But one thing continued disturbing their minds even as they were walking alone. They are walking at night, but something was disturbing their minds as a family, even as they were walking towards the tomb of Jesus Christ to give him a decent burial. And the Bible confirms this one in the book of Mark chapter 16. That as they were walking together, something kept disturbing their minds, and they were even wondering how this will become. And the Bible has these words on the book of Mark chapter 16 and verse 1. And now, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Verse 2, and very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. But as they were walking, they were asking themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? They were asking themselves. So this one was a problem that they were having. They are walking to prepare the body of the one they loved so much. But right in the midst of the journey, they are asking themselves that even as we are going today, we are not seeing any man with us and we are only women a few of us, and we saw the stone that was laid on him. Who will roll the stone away for us? That was the question that was disturbing them. But as, as I was going through this, I discovered that these women, as long as they were walking towards the tomb to prepare the body of Jesus for burial, they did not know one thing was disturbing them. They did not know that God was there walking with them. For them, they thought they were alone. And as they were walking, they were asking, who will roll the stone away for us? They did not have the idea that this will remain a spiritual history in the calendar of their lives. They were not even concerned about the, the, the messages of Jesus and even what he promised before he died that I will resurrect on the third day. They were not worried about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They were worried about who will roll the stone away for them. You see, brothers and sisters, sometimes problems will come on your way that you forget to see the major themes of Jesus always being there with us. And the Bible is saying that because of the challenges they were going through, because of the problems they were seeing, because of everything that was looking so bleak, the Bible is saying the question was disturbing their mind. Who will roll the stone away for us? In their despairs, they did not count on the one who is ever there, no matter the situation. This is reminding us that in our darkest moments as family members, in our darkest times, we easily forget. But in our challenges, that is the time that we need to know. That God who sits on high stoops too low. God who is there for, uh, ever there for us is touched by everything that is touching our lives. Brothers and sisters, just as we found in the course of the day and in the course of the week, let me tell you, when problems come in your family and you have struggled with your family all this time praying and there's nothing coming on board, you tend to think 
that God is never there with us. You have prayed for your husband and he's never changing. He is still the brutal husband. You have prayed for your spouse and she's never changing. You have prayed for your children and they are never changing. You have prayed for your sickness and nothing is coming. We sometimes tend to forget that our God has left us. But the Bible is confirming that in our challenges, that is the time in which God who sits high stoops low because God is touched with everything that is touching our lives. And so the Bible says that in their grief and despair, thinking that God was not there with them, thinking that they were alone, God was there with them. And in every step they were making, God was ever there with them. And I want to challenge us church members that we know that the God we serve is ever there with us regardless of the situations. God we serve is ever walking with us. God we serve is ever willing to help us. And there is no time that God will leave us because of the love he has for his children. Amen? Have you ever thought of that one? That sometimes you are wondering about what is happening in your family. Sometimes you are wondering about what is happening with your business. Sometimes you are wondering about what is happening with your spouse. But I want to let you know that God is always there and he will never leave you alone even as you struggle in this life. I am sometimes touched when I go to visit members and pray with them. One time we went for a week of prayer. See, our, week of, our weeks of prayers are not designed like you, have done, you, you are doing yours here in town. There in the village, you visit every home. Every home. So when you are posted for a week of prayer, you must gather a lot of energy because you will walk door to door praying for members in their homes. And so there is this mother, this lady, who has been struggling with her spiritual life and the problem with the husband. That the husband does not want to see her go to church. So this week, because it was a week of prayer, the husband told her in advance, I know that you are pretending there is a week of prayer, so tomorrow you will go to church. When you go to church, don't come back here. And so she got that courage and said, between me and God, I will go. And the man said, I will not discipline you now because you have not gone. But the day you go, I will discipline you. And you see, some people are living like they are not married to human beings. Some of these men you see here are real beasts. People who should be living in the bush. But how they were domesticated and they became human and living in homes, you may never know. Initially, I thought it was the men who were very brutal. But even today, women beat men like they are little children. That one I cannot take to the cameraman. I cannot even tell that one. But I see it around. People saying, my wife is beating me every day. And it is on media everywhere. That one, if my wife beats me today, I will never share. <laughs> How do you say you are a man when you come up publicly and you say, these women beat us? And then you say, oh, they have become congestina. They fight us in the house. That these days you don't even talk when there are problems. You talk and they ask you, who is that? And then you say, it is me, your husband. Pop! <laughs> so this lady was having a problem with the husband. The husband is against her coming to the church, but she will come anyway. So this particular day, after the week of prayer, she said to me, the preacher, that pastor, the way the program has ended at one, I have no home to go. 
So pray for me that as I leave, the Lord will provide a place for me after this week of prayer. But I am happy that I have heard the voice of God. But one thing I know, that after this one, I am no longer going to that home again. Then we say, so what is the problem? That my husband told me not to come, and I know him. He is going to destroy me at home. Then the elder said, we, let us take that with ourselves. And then they took that with themselves. Then they say, we are taking you. And then when I heard they are taking her, I also say, let me also join you. We take her home. We see how the husband beats people. And while we were just by the gate, the husband saw us coming, and he started moving around this way, moving around this way, collecting courage and momentum. <laughs> when we moved closer, the wife was behind us. You see, men, when they, they walk, the, the women, they are allowed to be behind because we are going to defend her. When we reached closer, the man was saying, so it is you people who are deceiving my wife. Today I'm killing all of you. And we thought he was having strength. So when he came and jumped on the elder, and I saw him on the ground, that elder was prepared. And the other elder was also there with him and tying his hand and folding it on the, on the back. And just one beating like this from the elder on a Sabbath day, he said, don't kill me, it is my wife. <laughs> we went into the house and talked to the man. After talking to him, he said, but why do you beat me in my own home? Then that one I said, when I read, I just read uh, Proverbs, I said, a good beating <laughs> takes away folly. <laughs> and then we were very serious. If you beat this woman again, we will take you to the police or we will be coming here and beating you every day. Do you know, some of us live like they are not in the homes. But one good thing, after all this episode, Today, as we speak, that man is a deacon in the church. Sometimes you look into your situation and you think you are just walking alone. You are just staying alone. You are just living alone. But my Bible is telling me that as these people thought they were walking alone, the Bible confirms that Jesus, God himself, was there already with them. And that is what gives me the, the energy even to remind you once again that the God we serve is a God who measures our steps, is a God who counts our tears, is a God who captures our sorrow, is a God that is always very faithful. So as you, as you cry in the home, remember there is a God who captures those tears? When you are sorrowful because of what you see in your family, don't be afraid of this. You see, families see a lot of dramas. Some of us, you got married and you thought things will be very good until you are calling each other, honey, 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 honey. Now tell me today, do you still call them honey? Honeys sometimes become very bitter drugs that you don't even want to swallow. That it comes to a point when the devil has frustrated you that those good names are no longer palatable in your lips. The only thing you can say, this man, this woman, this man, this woman, you behave like Adam. This man, this woman. But even as we go through these challenges in life, we still have to know that the God we serve count our tears. The God we serve capture our sorrows. The God we serve is not just a God who is far away from us, but is a God who is always there for us and with us. Can you say amen? amen. Yeah, tell your neighbor, neighbor. You are never alone. No, tell your neighbor this one. You see, you are, some of us are not telling their neighbors with some good attitude. You must have an attitude when you are talking to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. neighbor. You are never alone. 
Even when your wife is beating you, you are never alone. You are never alone. God is there with you and is there for you. When you are getting frustrated, you must never forget that you are not alone. Amen? Amen. I thank God because I am never alone in what I am doing as a Christian in this church. That even when I meet challenges in myself and in my family and with my children and with everyone, we are never alone. God is there with us. He still rolls stones that we will see his glory in our families. Last year, but one, I went home to pray with our family members just right at home. Then I found that some young man had died. And the story was running everywhere in the village. And I also got interested. I wanted to know what happened. And he's a, he's a young man I knew, but I did not know that he was so much into drugs, that he was so much into alcohol, that he was losing his senses. He was not married, but staying with the mother. So every now and then he will come home, and the mother prepares food for him. The good thing he was doing, that he was ever home at 7 p.m., but drunk. So when he comes home, he will say, Mama, what is there for supper? And Mama will give him food. And the mother was very patient with him. That the Mama will give him food. And after eating, he will say, Mama, this is the only thing you have? At yes. Then he will slap the mother, pap, and also slap the father, pap, and then he goes to sleep. Every day he was doing that in the evening. No, it is not a small parting like this. Not a small parting like this. Slapping, pop, and then another pop. After eating your own food, you get something for cooking. A thank you for cooking. Pop, pop. So one day this woman was tired of this beating. And so as she was sharing with the neighbors, the neighbors said, you mean that is what is happening with you? At yes, me, over my dead body. I cannot give you food and then you beat me after eating. Over my dead body. And you know, women know how to advise. <laughs> they know. Even when they have never stepped into your shoes, they know the answer. They say, it, for me, I can't give him food. At you give him food to get the energy to slap you after eating. No. But he's a will. Baptize that one. And how do I baptize? Let him stay without food. He, he will respect you. So this day the mother wanted to baptize the son. As she has been taught by the neighbor. And the baptism was of fire that you don't give food. So when this man came home at the exact time. 7 p.m. When he came home and the door was locked from inside, Mama and Daddy were all in their rooms. And no one, they locked the door from inside and they were not willing to talk to anyone. So this man came and said, Odi, Appa, Odi, Odi, silence, no one is talking. Then he moves to the window. Mama, are you there? No response. Daddy, are you there? No response. Then he went again to the door and knocked. Talk, talk, talk. Odi, Odi. No one is talking. Then they said, oh, okay. That is what the boy said. Oh, okay. So today you do not want me. I will also teach you a very good lesson. So I am locking the door. You see, he was talking through the window. I am locking the door, and in a short while, I am burning all of you with fuel. So touch the door. Those who were in the bedroom, the mother and the father stood because they knew that patrol was coming. So they stood waiting just to see the smoke. And while they were waiting for the smoke, the young man went, took a rope, climbed a mango tree just in the compound, 
hung himself up and died. So in the morning, they are not seeing him. And they were not asking. But now when it came evening, that he usually came home, he they, they, they was not coming. Then they started feeling some bad feelings like something has happened. So they started asking their friends, did you see so and so? Did you see his name was Otieno? Those ones born at night. Did you see him? Did you see him? Did you see him? He wasn't seen by anyone. Tomorrow, around midday, birds, you see, birds know how to identify when there is something unique. So the birds were moving around. And then, many of them. And then when they looked up, they saw something hanging. When they saw, moved closer, it was their son. This tongue that you see here is long enough. It is not something small you see here. The tongue is long enough. It was hanging somewhere here, the tongue, almost here. When we saw the tongue, we were asking. So that is why many of us, the Bible is warning us about the tongue. It is long enough to reach here. So then his friend came. You see, when such things happen in a family, not everyone will jump up and do it. His friends came, and now this friend went up and with a panga, cutting the rope. When he cut the rope, the body came up, and instead of just falling down, the body came up and stood like this. Just like I am standing. Everyone who was waiting and wailing <laughs> will not wait in the same compound. They were moving and taking steps because what they are seeing is not what they expected to see. And the tongue is down here. Now, when the friend came up, he was not even seeing that something unique has happened. He went and got hold of the friend who is dead and then uh, wanted to lay him down. And then when he took him down and he just went down and he was there laid down. Now, this man could not stand up. And that is how he also died with a man kneeling down. Let me tell you, in the entire village, you will not stand 100 meters near this home. People left every, even their parents left home. They said, this one we are not waiting to see. Until the policeman came and the chief came and no one was around to even consider helping. Everyone saw that one as something unique in the village and it was a talk in the village. Let me tell you, these homes that we see, we are coming from, these homes where we live, many of us are seeing what they never thought they would see in this life. But one thing is still evident, that even in such homes, God is still God. He never allowed people to walk alone. So when these women thought that they were walking alone, God was ever there and God was willing to walk with them. And one thing is very evident here, that they went to look for Jesus and to prepare his body. And the Bible is saying that when they went to prepare his body, the question was, who will roll the stone away for us? And my Bible say that as they were asking questions, they had never known that even though they thought they were alone, God was there to roll the stone away for them. Not that Jesus will come out. You see, many, many who are reading this text think that the stone was rolled, that Jesus will come out. That is not explained in the Bible. The Bible is saying that the stone was rolled away that the women will see Jesus and where he laid. That is what is in this verse, and you can see this one. Just go back to Matthew chapter 28 and see this one. And in verse 5, the Bible says, But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. And he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. So the stone was not removed that Jesus will come out. The stone was removed that the women will see the miracles of God where Jesus laid. Amen? Let me tell you 
The stone may be anything in your life that is hindering. The stone may be anything in your life that is hindering your peace. Anything that is blocking your happiness and your joy. Anything that is not giving you the energy. Anything that is blocking you so that you do not see what you want. That may be a stone. Your wife may be a stone in your family. Your husband may be a stone in your family. Your neighbors may be stones in your families. Your sickness may be a stone in your life. Whatever it is, the Bible is saying that the stone is anything that hinder you from being happy in the Lord. I may not know your stone, but the Bible is saying that the Jesus we worship is still willing to roll away the stones for us. Do you know there are men who do not sleep at night? Your wife becomes a stone. They wait till sleeping time when you are in the bedroom. Then they bring story. Did I tell you it is family life week? At yes, you told me. Now, did I tell you I needed a dress for that day? At yes, you told me. Give me my dress. Say, but why do you talk about dress at night? Oh, so it is night for you. I need a dress. And the story will continue, 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 continue. And you say, please allow me sleep. I am tired. Oh, so you know how to sleep. You think you know how to sleep more than I sleep. So when I talk to you about my dress, you are telling me about your sleep. Okay, sleep man of God. Sleep holy man. You see, when women begin talking like that at night, you will get it right even to sleep. <laughs> you went into your room and you thought it was a sleeping time and you had a, a prepared your appetite to sleep. Then stories come. I need my dress. And you thought it will end at two. So you say, let me hold on as I wait for two. But now at two, she's there. You wake up to pray, she's asking. So you are praying. Tell God about my dress. <laughs> when you see people sleeping in the church, don't bother them. Some of us may never sleep in their homes. You never know what people are going through in their homes. They're having stones. They even wonder whether, whether someone is there to roll the stone away for them. They are even looking, when will the stone be rolled out of my family so that I become happy? They are asking questions. Some ladies are seated here. They really wanted to get married, but there are stones in their lives. Something that is giving, not giving them peace at all. This man comes into your life and say, I love you, honey. And you also say, oh yes, I also love you. Then you begin. They take you closer until you see the bliss, until you say, let's see someone's wedding for a riaso. Let's see someone's wedding for a riaso. There's a wedding in a new life. Let's see that one. Every now and then you walk with them. Now, after seeing that wedding, and you hear the MC saying, now next the wedding should be between so and so. And we are praying for them. And you jump, hallelujah. Only to discover that the man was riding. The following day he says, so you are very serious. You wanted us to get married. You are very serious. I thought we were, you were just talking. So you are very serious. Then every now and then you call them. After that the line is busy. Excuse me, madam, I will call you at two. And you wait for two. I, will, I was very busy with assignments. I will call you at five. And you try to call at five. And every now and then you begin to follow. You begin to follow. And one mistake that young people do for themselves, that when they love, they give out their hearts. So they remain heartless in the village. 
So even when, when, when you just get another man who is very serious and say, excuse me, Christine, will you mind joining me? They say, no, I don't, I don't need any other love. I am in a serious relationship. Oh, serious? So how serious is it? Is it? Every year you have a new relationship. Every year you have a new relationship. Let me tell you, that is a stone that you need to take to Jesus that he will roll it away for you because he still rolls stones even today. Amen. Jesus, the son of God. So these women thought that they were alone and they were struggling with themselves. But the Bible is saying that as they were struggling for, with themselves, Jesus was already risen from the dead. And the Bible is saying that the, the angel told them, come see for yourself where he lay, the man of God, the, the savior of the world. Let me tell you, members, Jesus knows what we want. He knows you need encouragement in your home. He knows you need a husband. He knows you need children. And he's saying, I will provide. He knows you need peace. And he says, I will provide this. God will always make your story very interesting when you accept him to roll the stones away for you. And many of us say, oh, the doctor told me that I will not live for more than eight years with this sickness that I have. Many of us have been told by doctors that they will only live for one month and they are standing before you here with a testimony that instead of one month, the Lord has given them 30 more years and they are praising the name of the Lord. Let me tell you, we serve a God who still rolls stones away for us. And the pastor may not know which stone you are struggling with. You need to bring it to God. Who rolls away the burdens for us? If God be for us, as Paul is asking, who can be against us? Jesus has all the powers and he has given us all this power because he wants us to know that he cares. He still removes stones and bid us to say and say, come and see. He told his disciples that let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in me and believe also in God. In my, in my father's uh, place, there are so many mansions. He told them, let not your hearts be be troubled. And I am telling you, New Life members, let your, uh, your hearts not be troubled because we serve a living God. He is a risen God for our families. Just struggle peacefully when you know that God is ever there for you, for your children, for everything. Some of us are even struggling with studies. You go to class and things are not working. So you say, I will read in the morning. When it comes morning, you feel cold. Then you say, I will, leave, I will read at 10 a.m. Then you go for 10 and nothing is happening. Then you say, I will read at dawn. So you keep postponing. And when you read, nothing is going in. Your head is so compact, more than mala, that you try reading, nothing is happening, nothing is happening, nothing is happening. Let me tell you that even today, the Lord is able to roll away stones for us. I was telling my daughter, the only girl I have, you see, these ladies are jewels. If you have even just one like this, nurture them. Just one girl like this can turn your foolishness into something different. One like this. So I was sharing with my daughter when she was going to do her exams that the teachers have said that all candidates must be in class throughout the week. Even on Sabbath day, that is when they are grilled for exams. Then I told my daughter, don't even take notes on Saturday. Don't even try doing any exam on Saturday. And the teacher also was saying, Pastor, you are destroying your daughter for no reason. This girl is so bright. Let us assist her for you so that you see the beauty of your daughter. But I told them, even if it means my daughter is going to get 90 out of 500, but she'll never step in a, in a, in a school on Sabbath day. She'll never 
Then I told her, don't even copy notes that are given on Sabbath day. Don't even do it any other day. And the Lord that we serve will shock the world. Do you know, everyone was against me, including the teachers and church members, when I said no going to church on a sub, uh, school on a Sabbath day. Everyone hated me. But I told them, you cannot succeed in this life without God. Let the exam come. When the exam came, I was busy visiting members. When I received a phone call, I also knew that the exams, my daughter was going to pass. You see, when your child is going to pass, you just feel it in your blood. Something is running like this. <laughs> so it was running like this, and I knew my daughter was going to pass. And when I was busy visiting, but at the same time I was busy preparing how to rush because I knew something was just going to happen. But in a short while I received a phone call. Hello, that is Pastor that Yes, I say, yeah, that's me. Oh, Baba Petty Timolin, yeah, that is me. What about it? Oh, where are you? And I say, I am visiting members. Where is Timolin? She is in the house. Can you come with her? The Lord has done something beautiful. And let me tell you, when you receive such calls, even when you had not eaten anything in a long day, Atanja in Aisha. So we rushed to Homer Bay, and that is where they were waiting for us. And all this, the crews who are there, the citizen, the KBC, the this, this, the this, this, the only girl in Ohoma Bay County, 420. I thought you would say amen. You see, even if you don't say amen, even if you don't say amen, but my daughter got it. And I was walking tall in town. I was telling them, there's power in serving the Lord. There's power. And that is what, and let me tell you, I even tell you today, those of us who are struggling with exams, I know the candidates are here. Just trust in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your hearts. He still rolls stones for us. Those things you see as obstacles, the Lord will roll them away, out of your way, and you will remain to see the powers that God has for us. God cares. And I want to call our choristers this time. You see, sometimes you don't have to preach everything. When you preach everything, what will you preach today or even tomorrow? So I will stop at that point. Even as choristers are singing here, but let me remind you as the choristers are coming with song number 181 that the Lord we serve is a caring God, is willing to roll away stones in your family, stones in your life, stones in your home, stones in your place of work, stones in your relationship. This God is a faithful God. Let him roll the stones away for you that you will see his glory even in your marriage. Shall we pray? Gracious Father Divine, the creator of the universe, we thank you because it removes stones even today. We thank you, Jesus, because you are still powerful today, the same way you are powerful during the time of Abraham, the time of Moses. We thank you, Jesus, because you are going to restore peace in our families today. We thank you, Jesus, because you are going to connect the children, the husbands, and their, their, their wives together because you are powerful today, still removing stones. Father, the families where our brothers are almost giving up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we plead that you may be able to come through for each and every one of us. We thank you for this message that you have received this afternoon from your son, Pastor Dan Odash. Father, we thank you for this message. Because this message has reminded us that, your Lord, you are still powerful. Powerful to restore relationships. Powerful to restore peace. Powerful to heal those who are sick. Powerful to lift people from nothing to something. Lord, you are powerful and you still remove stones today. Father, understand that the sister who is pleading for her husband today, we trust that you are going to connect her with the right husband because better husbands can only come from you. No son and a woman can give right spouses, but only you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
Father, we thank you because you are coming down with mighty streams. That Lord, righteousness will flow like a river. But Father, it is my prayer that you may be able to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help us to be connected to thee who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Help us to focus because you are soon go going to come back and take us home. Lord, you are still powerful today. Powerful to wash us clean because you care, you see, and you know all the tribulations of men. Father divine, you are still powerful. I'm praying for this young girl who is seeking for a spouse. I pray for this lady who is praying for peace in the family because the husband has turned against her. I'm praying for this husband who is pleading for a, a, the right job that, Lord, he may be able to fend for his family. Father, you still care. Father, you know, and you're still powerful today, removing stones. Father, I want to pray even for our, as a country. I pray for the speakers of the word. I pray for all churches right from the general conference. That, Father, may you grant us the wisdom that can only come from thee. You are still powerful today. And we thank you for being with us since we started the family week of prayer. We thank you for everyone who has participated. We thank you for the choirs participating even today, the bereans and the vocal of praise. That, Father, may your will continue to be done in their lives. I pray, Lord Almighty, because you are still powerful today, that even as we continue for the rest of the program, even the afternoon, it is my prayer that you be part and parcel of this worship till you come to a close, for we plead in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and the love and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now, now and, and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you.